All right, so one of the things that I get questioned on a lot in the comment sections on YouTube is always around the idea that when I got into real estate, I was in debt. I didn't have a lot of money. I had terrible credit and uh, I didn't have much to my name at that point. And one of the rebuttals that comes up time and time and time and time again from people who don't understand real estate, don't live and breathe into that world, don't really have a deep understanding of it. Their, their opinions of real estate or opinion on these topics is stronger than their baseline understanding of it. And that's a recipe for disaster, especially when you are just moving through the world operating under the assumption that uh, the assumption that you are correct in your perspective and that's i get that a lot and people being like this guy's full of shit because there's no way that anybody's going to give you a mortgage on a building when you're broke and blah 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 all this stuff right and that's without understanding the context the picture and more specifically the nuances of real estate so i just wanted to share a little bit of my journey and like how i did get started and like how you could as well depending on where you are financially you don't need to be as far along on the journey as you might assume i didn't know this at the time i swear to god like it was light it was like having the the scales pulled across uh, pulled off my eyes when i finally like saw the the truth of like oh my god people that are getting into real estate they're not necessarily already millionaires they're not already billionaires like normal people can get into these investment vehicles in many many different ways and the way that i chose to do this was through something called an fha loan now the idea behind an fha loan is it's it's for first time home buyers um, I think the FHA stands for First Time Home Buyer Association or something like that. I don't know exactly, but it's a program that's it's a government subsidized program that's designed for first time home buyers, young people who maybe don't have great credit. They don't have great credit history. They don't have a ton of money. They don't have all these things. They don't have enough money saved up to be able to put down the normal 20 or 25 percent required on a commercial mortgage. So the FHA is really designed for people who are already coming from a disadvantaged financial position. And when you understand that there's actually quite a lot of loan products designed like this, you can start to look for them to, to take advantage of the opportunity. Now, there's some nuances and some downsides to the FHA I'll talk about here in a second. But for context, at the time when I got my FHA loan, I had probably around a 600 credit score. And that's not like a high six. I'm talking like dead on around 600 it is not great. I had $7,500 saved up or I had $7,500 for the down payment and I had about $20,000 in reserves. They like to see reserves. So all told I had about 27, $30,000 to my name. <laughs> like that was, that was my, that was my starting nut. And so I was, that wouldn't say, I mean, that's a lot of money. Um, but it, if you're making 50, $60,000 a year, you could be putting away, you know, a sizable portion of that each month and have that saved up within just a few years. And so going into this, I, at the time also, um, it's also wor worth noting, I was only pulling a salary of around $40,000 when I got into my very first building. And that was from a business that I owned. And that makes it even harder in a lot of cases to qualify for these loans. When you're getting, when you have a W-2 uh, salary being paid by somebody else, not your business, then the banks actually look on you more favorably. But I went into this building, so it was a triplex. Um, that I negotiated it down to $246,500. And this was in a market that I knew that building probably should have been going for closer to $300,000, $310,000. And uh, so picked it up for about 50-ish less than what they could have gotten for it. And the reason for that, I think, is largely luck. Um, I think part of it is relationship building and just being somebody that the, the seller wanted to do business with. Uh, the building was not in the greatest neighborhood. When you're starting off and you're trying to find these deals that you can you can make your money go further, uh, sometimes you have to go into rougher neighborhoods. And this wasn't a bad neighborhood, but it wasn't a great neighborhood. And there really wasn't any kind of like future for this neighborhood. It wasn't in the path of progress, meaning like other businesses and stuff are moving in and they're gonna make the neighborhood better. It wasn't like that. So there wasn't like a, a great long-term outlook for this building. Um, getting what we call uh, organic appreciation. That's the kind of appreciation appreciation that occurs when the market just generally improves. My, uh, looking back on it, the building was actually very good for me and where I was and having to learn the processes and getting my feet into the game. But um, I would not go back into that neighborhood. I wouldn't take that investment again. But when you're young, you can bear to take more risk. And you should, like, you have more time to recover from it. 
and to go be willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do. So picked up this building for $246,500. I got an FHA loan, which only required that I put down, I think it was like three, three and a half percent. So I put down a down payment of $7,500. I had 20,000 in reserve. And so I bought this building, this triplex with three separate living domiciles inside of it for $7,500 out of pocket. I moved into one of the units, which was a two bedroom, and I lived in one of the bedrooms, and I rented out the other bedroom uh, to a guy that I found on Craigslist. He paid $600 a month for the one bedroom. I uh, lived in the other one, uh, other bedroom, and then the other two units in the building, I think it was a one unit, and it was a two, uh, a single, uh, single bedroom and a two bedroom. The single bedroom, I think we rented out for like 850 or 900 by the time we sold it. And then the two bedroom, I think we were getting right around 1,000 to 1,100. And so you do the math on all this, you know, 600 plus around 800 plus another thousand or so, it was pulling in like $2,300 per month in income. Whereas my mortgage on this thing, a mortgage on, you know, $240,000 um, was far, far less. And so all this is to say, I was cash flowing a couple hundred dollars every single month and getting to live for free. And I think that's the real beauty of this situation. It's called house hacking. I was living in the bedroom. I already need to pay housing. And if I was gonna rent out that one bedroom somewhere else, it'd probably cost me 600 to $800 a month. But now I'm not paying that. Now I'm actually getting about 200, $300 of pure cash flow per month on this asset. And I'm also not having to pay rent. So all told, I'm I'm saving around $1,000 a month just by doing this deal, right? And so after 12 months, that's $12,000. That's pretty damn good. Well, what ended up happening with this asset was nine months later, I knew I had bought it at a really good deal, but what I didn't realize is that I actually bought it at a fantastic deal. I went back nine months later to refinance the asset after I had done some improvements to the property, went back to the bank and they reevaluated it for $375,000. So that's 125K more than what I paid for it. So what I did then was I refinanced that asset and the new loan that they gave me was for like 70% of the, the purchase or the, the new valuation of the 375 or whatever. And so really what that means is the, new, is the bank is coming in, we're getting a new mortgage, we're paying off the old mortgage. The new mortgage is more because it's now 70% of the 375 and I can't do that math off the top of my head, but it's more than my initial mortgage, which was 240, 240 or so, right? But what it did was with the FHA loan, you have something called your, um, uh, what is it? I can't remember your PMI. So it's um, a certain type of insurance that is on these assets, which because you put such little money down, they want to make sure that you're, you're covering that. So that's like a couple hundred bucks per month. For me, I think it was like 160 bucks per month. Um, but by refinancing it, going into the higher loan to value, so I had more equity in the building, I was able to get rid of that cash flow even more. But the beauty of this system was that the bank, after they pay off the original loan and they have this higher amount, let's say it was for 310, like, so 240 of that goes to pay off the old loan. And then that means 60K is given back to me in the form of a check. It's non-taxable. It's just money in the bank immediately that I can go and redeploy. And that's what I did. I took that money that I got from the refinance and I went and bought another asset. And I ended up moving out of that triplex and moving another tenant into there. So now instead of having, you know, me living in one of the bedrooms, not paying anything, I had put somebody else in there, they paid 600. So now it's, you know, cash flowing even better than it was before. So all this is, is to say, like, I was able to get into this asset with very, very little money out of pocket, with very low income, with not great credit. And granted, I got really lucky with the timing of everything. I caught the organic market appreciation. I couldn't have seen that coming. I shouldn't have gotten that lucky, but all told, it was a way for me to get into the business, learn the ins and outs of it. And it set me up very, very well for everything that I've done subsequently, because really just over the years, I've just done a variation of that same play over and over and over, just with bigger and bigger buildings. You know, instead of buying a building now for 246,000, now I'm buying buildings for 10 million at a time. And then we're doing the same thing. So we're making the building go from being 10 million when we buy it to being worth 12 million. And then we're taking that $2 million difference and we're pocketing that, right? So that is in a high level, my kind of first, my first real estate deal. And 
I don't know if where you're at in your journey, if that's going to be the plan that works for you, but just realize that there are a lot of ways to get involved in real estate and to benefit from it. But um, the key I think you need to be aware of is to answer the question, do you want to invest in real estate or do you want to build a real estate investing company? What I did was I built a real estate investing company. I went into it, treated it like a business and I treated it like my full-time job. If you just want to in passively invest in real estate and you don't necessarily want to be a landlord and do all the work that goes with building a business, like AKA you don't want to have a side job then there are other ways to invest in the real estate specifically get the benefits of it without having to do the work which is one of the things that we do now in one of my businesses is that we bring investors into our deals we buy the buildings together and then we own and operate them on behalf of the group so that's just an example but that's neither here nor there okay so that's gonna do it for me guys i appreciate everybody for being here thank you i hope this brings a little bit of value a little bit of a perspective maybe on real estate in a way that you didn't know before maybe it gives you some insight into how you can get involved and i hope you do because it's it's an awesome vehicle so that's gonna do it for me guys catch you guys back around these parts tomorrow until then stay hyper